Okay guys, so step five, step, step six, step seven, and optimization. We will talk about all those points simultaneously. So we run it and this we get a lot of simulation uh, so we will mm, separate those simulations uh, e in order to show you different effects regarding different parameters of your antenna so first of all what we are going to do is to talk about the output radio okay the output why about the output well we will sh we will um, thought that this effect is really important to highlight so um, just for a starting point the um, input radio is the same for each case okay and is thought is defined to got a really good matching and you will see we will explain it um, with those results okay so um, just to put you in the situation we will show you different simulations with different output radios okay aperture radio so this is uh, 7.6 millimeters here this one as you can see is larger okay here we got a uh, 14 millimeters of aperture radius and finally we got 22 and a half millimeters and as you can see at the first side the antenna is the same okay the length is the same the only one different is the aperture radius i mean the waveguide is the is the length is the same the radius also the same the number of slots or let's say teeth okay for the corrugation is the same too and the only difference is that okay so this i mean is fair enough to compare so mm, let's talk about S11 XX11 so there we got different behaviors as you can see here mm, just one second okay um, no 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 I didn't want to, to do that uh, font yeah this one okay so now mm, there we go as we said before we are going to compare the matching of our three cases remember the input radio is the same five millimeter but the output radio mm, is not so uh, for the, the for the input as you can see five millimeter is enough to get a proper matching at the input actually the input if you remember the input was uh, uh, 21.7 gigahertz so look at this the s11 at this frequency is perfect okay and what we need to optimize is the matching at the output at 31 gigahertz so as you can see here as you can see here the matching for the um, let's say the um, the minimal radio case <laughs> let's say that uh, for seven and a half millimeter we got an matching uh, an S11 about minus 12 which is not bad but is not good enough okay so if we keep enlarging this radio for example up to 14 or up to 
22 and a half millimeter we will improve it okay we will improve it so that's the effect of the output radio okay the aperture radio so if you want to match a different mm, section of your horn you will have to play with the radio okay this is effect that we want to show regarding the input radio and the output radio of your horn antenna corrugated one so now regarding those the same cases okay we will talk about radiator pattern we already talked about uh, matching S11 so now it's time to talk about radiation pattern of all those cases so here we, there we go there we go there we go mm. what I want to show you is the effect of the aperture radio regarding radiation pattern if we go to for example 30 and 1 gigahertz okay as you can see here we got three main lobes and we don't want to have that we what we are expecting is to have a clear main lobe just one just one but because the proper uh, the main advantage as we said before from this kind of antenna is a high linear copolar component and very low actually to uh, the second advantage is to not having a side low level okay on or just a very low side low level and as we can see here the level of those side low are actually the same as the main low which is not good for our application let's say that we are mm, wasting energy on those direction that we uh, didn't use let's say that okay in simple words okay so and remember 31 gigahertz and uh, we are moving to this case uh, in which the antenna is, yeah, has a 14 millimeters now let's compare it 41 okay so as you can see here as you can see here uh, which is what is the difference what is the difference from this one for the previous one you can yeah guess it well actually second lobe levels second lobes are closer okay which means that we are making the aperture bigger we are concentrating okay we are concentrating our energy in that direction actually mm, if we make the aperture bigger the directivity and also the gain is improving now we got 20 uh, we got 12 okay almost 13 and as you can see here we were wasting energy here so the gain was actually uh, 7 okay dvs dvis so if we make the aperture uh, bigger this is what we gain and if we keep enlarging the antenna we got to take a look now we got a uh, 22 millimeters and let's say what we got here oh mama oh mama oh mama oh mama <laughs> that's the effect of our radio as you can see here 
the energy is concentrated here in this lobe actually I got to say that this is not what we want we just want to have a one main a principal main lobe okay and here we got a clear null and we don't want that okay we don't want but mm, this is for academics mm, explanation so if we keep enlarging our uh, let's say to 13 uh, of radius for sure we will get a clear main lobe without this new okay so we just want to show that enlarging or make it bigger the radio of your aperture you will be able to concentrate to increase to improve the gain uh, the directivity and also as you remember the matching of your horn okay for that frequency for that uh, frequency band yeah remember that the explanation that we that we talked before okay